ladies and gentlemen, it's Greg here again with a uh, an unboxing of a paper pants. I do like my paper pants, as I must admit. I've had this for quite a while and I totally forgot all about it. I was looking in the cupboard for something and um, there it was. So I thought I'll, I'll do a kit review on it. So it's a trumpeter kit and it's the uh, German E75 100 tons uh, standard panzer. So you can see, basically see it's, it's, a, it's a, an enlarged King Tiger by all accounts really when you look at it. Uh, looks a nice kit, it's fairly simple, I've had a quick look through the box, not too many parts. Um, nice bit of artwork, which is quite nice. Obviously it's 135 scale I should say. So it's on the side of the box, we have a bit of uh, information. Yeah, you can read that, or I'll bring it in for you and you can perhaps read it. Pause that and you can read that and there's a couple of little, uh, little call outs there, but the size of the weapon on that bloody thing, it's massive. And there's a bit, a bit of PE and a bit of copper wire. And let's say the kit number is 01538. So that's on that side, so the end of the boxes are just the usual fare. You know, just the picture that's on the front and the kit, and the kit number and obviously the kit itself. And on the other side we have a few pictures of the finished model. There's, there's not a great deal in parts in this, I must admit. So it is quite a quick build, I would have thought. Oh, that's it, quite nice still. It still looks like a, a knee or well, a day build, I would have thought. There's nothing too uh, too hard, I wouldn't have thought, to build this. Let me just bring it back. There we are. Um, so let's open the box and let's see what we've got. So there's normal, and I shall take the lid off. And we'll just go through spruvy sprue. So. The first sprue, there's two in this bag, which is uh, the resealable bags, is it? No. Right, knife. So, just get rid of that. So, there's two sprues the same here. It's made of the sprockets and the wheels and the suspension arm, the exhausts. And there again. Nicely detailed again. Can't argue with that. Sprocket, the sprocket is some size. I'm going to show you the thickness of the sprocket. It's a hell of a size sprocket. Really is nice. It's nicely detailed, both parts inside and out. Nice ribbon, uh, resin, resin bolt heads. Two piece exhaust, I think. Yeah, they are. Yeah. The suspension arms and then we obviously put this small part for the suspension and obviously we have a couple of the shackles the uh, jack it's through to the, to the tracks can never remember what they're called s s block or something i can never remember what they're called but to do with the tracks i don't know what that piece is until we find out part of the yeah, part of course that's the uh these bo they've got bogies on these ones which is unusual for a German really. He's never even allowed that many bogies on a tank. So it's just the usual fare on there, nothing a few small parts. But they're all nicely detailed, no flash with us, and there's no injection marks. So the wheels are nicely detailed as well. Really are nicely detailed. So the flash, as I say there's no flash and even the the you know the reverse of the the wheels are really nice and there's no injection marks on them as well which is really really nice see the injection marks that they are in, you can't see because they're all uh, hidden away so there we have the transmission as well so I didn't see that pattern there the uh, cover as well so it's nicely detailed again so there's two spare there's two sprues the same as that there's not a lot, lot of plastic in these uh, Paper Panzer kits, obviously, because they were. Uh, I don't think these were ever built. I think there's a chassis that was built, so I don't think anything else was built. I may be wrong, and if I am. Please, please correct me with the comments in below. 
and then we have yeah, there's only three bags of sprues and there's not a great deal to this kit but it builds up into a uh, quite a large sized tank typical German so and obviously you have a little grab handles and little hooks and there's the commander's cupola we have a two piece barrel look at the size of the bloody gun absolutely it's two piece unfortunately but there's not a seam line that that should be easy peasy to get out a few hatches the uh, the lower half of the turret so they're all nicely detailed again looks like a choice of two mantlets or is it uh, no just the one mantlet yeah far got inside there and that's the uh, mantle cover lots of little bits and bobs on there all nicely detailed again hatches all nicely detailed no flash no ugly anything about them that's really nice you can see it's fairly, it looks a fairly simple kit to put together there's uh, nothing really too much to it and I see on the other side again we have the injection mask that you're never going to see because it's all inside I don't know what that little thing is there that's a there we got let me see that when I see it there I don't know what that is looks like one of them like a jack thing or a, a wrench something like that we'll find out won't we see I can't go over the size of the actual uh, size of the gun let's see it's only on one two three four five sprue gets and then obviously the seam line so that shouldn't be too long to get too or too hard to get out what I usually like to do say is I always that's the first thing I have to put together uh, and then leave it and then seam and then as, a, as I'm going along I just sand it and get all the seam out and it shouldn't be a problem because I wouldn't have thought there'd be any metal barrels for this I could be wrong but I wouldn't have thought so but we shall make the best of the plastic one Yes, again, so there's, there's, there's not a great deal to this kit. I thought there'd be more actually in the kit itself, but this is just stuck in. And then this is the last big sprue where we have the side skirts. Uh, I guess the uh, yeah, side, I suppose, yeah, side skirts or mud guards and the. The rear, rear of the tank. So there's, uh, there's no texture on there or anything. It's quite plain, but they're nicely detailed. Like I say, it's just a, a, a large king tag. By looking at it, more guards, little bits and pieces, jack, track cleaning rods, air fans, covers there. Uh, yeah. We have exhaust covers. I say I put a bit of Mr. Surface on now. A little bit, not much on. There's no texture on there, so I put it. Won't, uh, won't uh, take too much on it. We put a little bit. Uh, the uh, highlights for the shackles. Sorry for the torque cables, which are yeah, they're all hollowed out. So. Obviously we have the brass wire in here, or copper wire, which will go sit in there, obviously the measurements and so they're all nicely detailed again, even the little uh, the tools really are nicely detailed. You know, the wire cutters and the axe and the shovel, the usual sort of German things and the hammer, sledgehammer. And there we have the uh, jack. Start big so start handle I would say manual start and handle again all nicely moulded so and that's it as far as the sprues are concerned you know this I keep saying there's not a lot and there isn't and I can't remember how much I paid for this because it's not long enough I don't think I've paid much for it but uh, right let's get into the uh, the main hull I'll do the top one to top piece first. As you can see, 
from the size of it, it's quite a uh, large tank. So I've got quite big arms, and you know, it's quite large. There's a bit of texture on there, not especially on the on the top. You know, if you can quite pick it up, but the detail is really nice on there. And the engine covers, look at the covers on them. That's really nice in all there. So they'll take a lovely wash, and obviously we've got the engine cover there, and then for the uh, air intakes, or and then then we have uh, some P, I think, to go on top of these parts here. And I think there's some for little brackets as well for the um, Pioneer tools. And obviously we have the engine, sorry, the uh, driver's hatch and the uh, gunner's hatch. Well, there's was a gun on the front of this one, so it's the wireless operator. I don't think there's a bow gun on this machine, though, aren't you? A bow gun, a bow gun, a bow gun, so yeah, quite a detailed again. There's a little bit of texture on there, but mainly more on the top. Which is, you know, just like, almost like this rolled steel type thing. And they didn't quite pick it up. It's just a bit rougher than round the, uh, I don't know what that is there. Hmm, bit of an injection mold has come through there, which can... We'll have to lose that somewhere along the line, it's a bit of a shame. But it shouldn't take too much to take that out of there. So, that's the upper hull. And then we have the lower hull. Again, there shouldn't be too much detail on this, you see, it's the usual sort of uh, thing here underneath. All the ex. Uh, you know, escape arches and other covers for uh, other bits and pieces, parts of the tank. Nothing much on the side. There again, really plain, there's nothing on there at all. Like you see, it's a uh, quite large beast. Nice, you know, it's nice and flat, which is good as well. And it's nice plastic, and a trumpet is always nice plastic. Well, that's been a there with that one, as I say. Pop that away. And then we have the upper turret, which basically is just the same shape as the King Tiger. I'm almost certain it's the same size as well. I would have thought it would be very, very similar, if not the same. But see, it's nicely detailed. You know, nice. It's got that texture again on the top, it's on the uh, top of the uh, main hull as well. The camera can't quite pick it up. I don't know what them parts are. Is that the same again? There seem to be them two parts there seem to be the same as what's on the hull. As well, which I'll have to uh, sand off, cut off. It's not a problem, it's just, it's just unusual for that to happen. I don't know what they are. That says a lot of uh, Little bits and bobs to go on the side for the track hooks and one thing and another on the sides. Nice bit of, you know, weld seams and, you know, where plates have joined together. That's quite nice. I like that. And there's not really any. The lines are there, but there's not really any weld seam that's pronounced. It's slightly there, but I say with a wash, it'd probably bring it up. So. Yeah, that's not quite nice though, nice detail, nice detail. And then we have some of the tracks, and we have the rubber tracks on this one. And look at the thickness on these buggers. Excuse me. Yeah. Quite nice nicely detailed for rubber plaque, there's nothing wrong with them. You know, once they get... Uh, Painted and uh, weathered and that. A few little sinkholes in the, uh, but they'll be hidden anyhow, so I don't have to worry. But the guide horns, uh, not the solid, so I presume they are solid on the tank, but yeah, all solid. But oh, quite, they're quite nice. They're not, not the worst tracks I've ever seen. They're not the best tracks I've ever seen, but. One would presume, yeah, 
they go together with normal glue but we'll see that when we get to the instructions so you know they're quite the actual depth of them and the width of them is quite uh, quite large so that's the rubber tracks or vinyl tracks or whatever you want to call them and then we get to the little bits and pieces we have a bit of clear parts and yeah there is a bit of copper wire or brass wire in there with a few clear parts there's no point in getting that out of the bag so obviously the copper wires for the tow cables and I would say the clear parts for all the uh, vision ports so they're quite nice again nothing wrong with them and PE we have a little threat of PE we have, to have the engine covers and then we have some other little bits and pieces I think they're smaller larger rings I think they're for the exhausts and then we have some other uh, lines of brackets for the uh, the tools to be bent around them so I'll cut the uh, plastic ones off not too sure what the other ones are but we'll sure find out so uh, that's it really and there's uh, no decals on it at all, which is unusual, but uh, I'll just put some on again. It's a, it's a paper target. We, we're uh, mine can work overtime when it can, so there's no, there's no set pattern. Then I'll give you a, a, a um, colour to use. But I took the instructions out of the bag yesterday just to have a quick read. From yesterday, just have a quick look. Uh, first of all, do the. Uh, it's nicely. I like. I do like this one. The uh, give you a colour call out. It's a pity they're all. I don't know. They aren't anywhere. So we've got colour call out for Mr. Hobby, for Leo, Model Master, to me, and Humbro. That's a bit of a glare on there. So. Let's have a look. You read them in there. So there's only a few matte black, wood brown, dark green. So that's it. Can't even read that with my glasses on. Sandy brown and burnt iron. So the colours that most of us all would have in our in our uh, paint cupboard. So I can't remember the size of the actual gun. I think it's longer than the actual uh, hull of the tank. Quite looking at the picture. It's nice that they give you the. Uh, you know, let's get that clear. A bit above there. I do quite like that camo pattern. That's what I do something along those lines. It's a big beast. Well, that's quite nice. I do like that when they give me that. Actually, it makes a lot of difference. And then we have the uh, instructions, which is in a booklet form. And obviously, you would have the. Uh, This is a decal pack application. Good decals up, but I think I say I haven't come across any. And my looking at this. There isn't any. So doesn't matter, I can uh, read me my spares cupboard counter and make it look how I look what I want to make it look like. What I like about the tape fans is you can sort of, you know, there's no, nothing set in stone. So we have the uh, first page. We have a sprue, you know, the sprue map. Like I say, there's not only one, two, three sprues, low hole, upper hole, turret, PE, brass, and the photo etch. So there's not a great deal, and obviously the track, so there's not a great deal in there. So this is say it could be built within a, easy within a day, easily. So the first part is the uh, Put the sprocket and the uh, idler wheel together. Tell you to put the tracks, and this track is kit can be glued together using plastic cement, so we don't have to do the old. We don't have to do any of the uh, hot screwdriver to do, which is good. And then this is one of the bogies. These are actually bogies, cantilever assembly for the wheels, so they're fairly straightforward. You know, nothing too elaborate on them. It says. Uh, Make four of each, so we have the uh, right and left, presumably. Yeah, right and left. 
Oh, that's nothing too too difficult in that. And then we start on the lower hull, putting the uh, cantilever suspension arms on the hull, and then the few little bits and pieces on for the transmission, and then the uh, on the reverse of it just to finish that off, and the idler arm, so the uh, yeah, um, for the idler wheel to go on the back. And then we can start assembling the wheels, and they're all single wheels. There's no double wheels on this, like the usual Germans do. So all single wheels. There's eight on each side, so there's not that many really. But see, I can't believe the size of the sprocket. The thickness of the sprocket is huge. Be interesting to see how this actually fits together with the uh, with the road wheels. Well, I'm going to check that. They are look like there's metal. I don't know if they're metal. By looking at the yard, they are metal. I wouldn't have thought to be uh, rubber. Because they were running, they were running short of that kind of stuff weren't they, towards the end of the war. Um, and then we have the track assembly again, putting the tracks in which I wouldn't do at that point. I always leave that till later on so it's easy to uh, do the wheels. I say I won't put the wheels on here because there's no poly cap, so they'll be all painted separate and put on later at the later date. And then we have the uh, assembly of the uh, lower hull, sorry the, uh, the, uh, the rear end the exhausts and exhaust covers and a few little bits and pieces and a uh, jack yeah uh, see, I can never remember what they're called but to do with the track anyhow S, S hooks or something I, I can't really can't remember I'll have to look into it and engrave it into my mind so I'll know for next time anybody who wants to uh, refresh my memory please leave, a, leave it in the comments section below and then again we're putting the reverse, so the rear of the tank into the main hull and then we start off with the muck guards onto the, uh, onto the rear as well which is, uh, where we are, there we are there's nothing, big page there for just for two items you know, it's really spreading it out so that and that, that's it that, uh, and all like a simple, not too many pieces on a, uh, on a page but I think that takes the biscuit that one um, and then we go on to the lower hull. Sorry, the, the teeth in again, it's terrible. We start on the upper hull, we've got so quite a bit going on. We have uh, the engine cover, the air, man, uh, the air extractors or intake, uh, a few of the tools, and here we have the um, P for the uh, clasps. So obviously, we have to cut and remove the ones that actually on the uh, on the tools themselves, which is a ball like at times, but they do look nicer when you have the on the PEs on them. So I have to be careful when we do that. But and there we are. There's the clear, which I won't put in again. Because obviously, it has to be painted. They'll go in last. I won't put the upper hole. Won't glue the upper hole to the lower hole. I'll keep that separate uh, until everything's ready to be uh, battened down. So there we are. This is basically all the. Uh, you know the Pioneer tool telling you to cut off and put the EP on there you know, the tow cable, the engine, uh, sorry, the uh, track uh, cleaning rods for the gun fairly self-explanatory it's a matter of say mainly it's just cutting off the uh, plastic parts off the uh, Pioneer tools and uh, using the PE and then we're carrying on with the upper hull again so we have the, uh, the light and the uh, wire for the light Pass for the uh, the covers for the um, viewports. There again, we've got more PE for the uh, bolt cutters. So it's going to be quite difficult to get that off there, but we shall soon see. Uh, and then we obviously have the, the, the tow cable on the uh, on the side. All the shackles, um, all little bits and pieces on the on the rear um, engine cover, and then. This is the brass wire telling you to cut it at 220 millimeter, millimeters. So that'll be cut, and then obviously they'll fit into the eyelets and then onto there. More track cleaning rods and another rod, whatever that for, I'm not too sure. And then we're starting to attach the lower hull to the upper hull, which I probably won't do at this time, like I said, because obviously from the glass in there and other bits and pieces, I shall be. Spraying it before and before I put all the clear parts in. 
and then it's putting more shackles on the front and the front mop guards and the fenders fenders can go on because obviously the, the upper hull won't be fastened down to a lot so I've plenty of time to get the tracks on by then that's no problem and then we're starting if I can get to the page on the turret Ooh, so it's quite nothing to the turret again fairly straightforward nothing that we haven't seen before a lot of PE again and all the little pieces and pieces for the tracks, covers, engine covers, uh, sorry, commander's cupola and hatches and one thing and another. Rear, the rear door for the back of the turret, make it workable by the looks of it. And then obviously we have the commander's cupola and the hatch. There's no figures with this, so we all batten down, but I might, I might have a I might be able to get some figures into it somewhere along the line and then say so this is the putting of the gun I do this first, this is the first thing I ever do is put them two part, that together and that together obviously in this case that and that together so I can get the, so I can, uh, get the seam line out and then we have the uh, top of the uh, so the bottom that goes into the uh, gun mantlet which is uh, slide moulded so I can't understand why they haven't slide moulded that part but that's, you know, it's just strange that they can slide more things for some things and card for the other. So that's fairly straightforward again, nothing too too much going on. Then we have on the uh, cover for the gun. It goes onto the mantle, there's a bit of, I think it's P, you know, it isn't P, just little bits and pieces. There's a little bit of P, it goes on top of the uh, gun cover. And then obviously we're putting the gun cover onto the the turret and then the turret onto the lower hull and that is it so nothing too much to it at all so I'm going to have a look around and see what I can come up with something a bit different but you know it's a, it's a bit of a beast but it's a fairly simple beast to build it'll be interesting to see what it's like when it's uh, when it's done so I might, I might even do this before I do the Leopold shouldn't really say that sure Mr Ken might be watching um, I'll see. I'll see how I feel. But uh, I should really do good on with the Leopold. I might even just do the Leopold tracks to start with and get them all cleaned up and sprayed, and then I've made a start. Then really, so I'll probably do that tomorrow as the weather is. It's snowing and one thing and another. I won't be going anywhere. I'm supposed to go to the hospital tomorrow, but this weather, I won't be going anywhere. So I have plenty of time to uh, get the railway build done he says. But yeah, so it's a fairly simple kit, but I probably want to enjoy making because as I, say, I do like the German paper panzers that are a bit uh, a bit different and say so you can let your mind go wild with whatever you want to do with them. So I'd just like you thank you very much to all my subscribers and the new ones I keep picking up which is quite nice. I mean uh, it took me a bit to get to 100 and I'm you know I'm 166 now so it's really picking up quite fast. So thank you very much to all my subscribers and thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to uh, to watch this so this is greg signing off and we shall see you soon goodbye <laughs>